Yo, what's good everybody? I just want to do a quick video on what you need to 1J swap your IS300. Um, as you can see, I've already pulled out the 2J ZGE. Um, sadly, I blew a hole straight through the block, as you can see. So, yeah, I'm um, not that mad about it because I got that baby right there chilling. So, yeah, I just want to do a quick video, show y'all what y'all need. The basics, there's a lot of videos out there, so... I'm probably gonna be cross-referencing between a lot of them. So yeah, let's start off with the main thing, the 1JZ. Now there's a lot of 1Js you can get. Um, ETCIS, ETCSI, I'm sorry. That's the one you want for the IS. The IS300, you want this one. Um, the difference between this one is I believe it's drive-by drive -by cable, drive-by wire, I'm not sure which one. But it's you have a manual cable controlling your throttle, basically is what that means. Which the IS300 on the 2J, the 2JZ has that. As you can see, the throttle body, I can actually bring it over. It's also drive by wire, so you're manually controlling your throttle. This is the 2JZ throttle body. Same thing with the 1JZ throttle body. As you can see same sound and all that so you basically want this ETCSI you want that you also you want to try to get a VVTI now if you are gonna go non VVTI this video is not really gonna be helpful towards you because I will, I'm I'm doing VVTI because one it's easier and I don't really feel like dealing with the same twins I know a lot of people do have non VVTI's in their ISs but it's harder and I've heard that stock twins hit up against this firewall, so not the firewall, it's whatever the fuck that's called. It hits up against that. So yeah, single turbo is enough for me. And um, yeah, VBTI has a lot of advantages anyway, you know. So yeah, VBTI, this is a JZS 171, as you can see, JZX 171, JZS 171. JZS1, JZX110, I believe. Um, they're all the same. The only different thing about it, I believe, is the body harnesses, you know, and the the ECU harness itself. Other than that, other than that, everything is pretty much the same. Make sure you obviously get a front sump. You don't want a rear sump that won't fit in the IS. Rear sump being the oil pan is more back. So, yeah, make sure you get a front sump. Um, while you have it out, you know, refresh your timing belt, water pump, all that. Um, another major thing about the motor is you want to make sure you want to make sure you get a non immobilized ECU. What this means that you want that to be blocked off. That is an immobilizer. If you have that plug, your IS300 key, the key that goes into the ignition. No matter what you do, it's not gonna start the motor. You can jump the starter, you can do all of it. It's not gonna start. You need this plate. You need this non-immobilized ECU. So make sure when you're getting it from the importer that it doesn't have this, this plug. Now, I can actually show you what an immobilized ECU looks like, because I have one. So 2J. As you can see, it has those plugs. There's no plate. I believe, I don't know if it's these two, but yeah. Basically, if I were to swap this ECU into another IS, only my key would start it. And obviously you're not getting the key with the motor, so yeah. Not immobilized ECU is key, you need that. You need that to swap the, that 1J into this. So moving on from ECU and 1J, you gotta pick a transmission. Now, the 1JZ does come with an automatic transmission. Now, you can go auto um, if you are. I'm sorry about that. But um, this car is automatic, and I was definitely not going to put another automatic inside of it. So, you have a couple options. You have about three options. About four. You have the W55, which is stock. That came stock in these IS300. That is a five-speed W55. Now... A lot of people get mixed up. They think those are W58s. They're not. They're W55s. Those W55s are not the strongest transmission. So, obviously, you got a 1J with a little turbo on it. 
you're gonna wanna be banging gears, you know? So I would not go with a W55. However, if you do have one and you're on a budget, you know, put it in. See, I just wouldn't put too much of a, I wouldn't put a grabby clutch on it, you know? I wouldn't go with a, a stage three six putt clutch because you're definitely gonna blow that transmission. Um, probably just stock clutch with the 1J. Don't bang gears too much and you should be good. Um, other than that, your second option is the R154. The R154 came on the 1J. That came on the non-VVTi 1Js. Once again, the non-VVTi 1Js, they're not the ideal swap for this car. So you, R154s are also expensive. That with the non-VVTi 1J, I think you're looking at $4,000. At that point, you might as well get a 2JZ GTE and slap that in. So R54, yeah, you can put that in. Just be careful, do your research because there's two types of R54. It's there's a tripod and a non-tripod. So watch out for that. If you're gonna go R54, just do your research. I would recommend you to go with the W58. That's what I went with. Um, more on the W58 in a minute. Let's cover option number three, which is a CD09. That is a six speed out of a 350Z, I believe. Now, yes, those transmissions are a little bit more expensive. And you're gonna be thinking, yeah, six speeds, why, why the hell would I not want that? Don't forget, that's not bolting up to this 1J. So you have to get an adapter plate. That adapter plate is a thousand dollars alone. The only place that sells that is Collins. That's an auto trans. The only place that sells that is Collins. So you're looking at 2,500 for the trans and then another thousand for the, for the adapter plate just to fit it on the 1J. That's not ideal. That's more than the motor. The motor alone is $2,000. So why would you spend another, whatever, $3,000 on, on a trans? It doesn't make sense. But if you want that six speed, then I understand, go ahead and get that. But the ideal option is a W58. Maybe I'm just biased, but the W58 came out of the Mark III Super. So it is a five speed transmission. I think, I think the W58 is a perfect middle ground. It's not too weak like W55. It's five speeds. It has a it's five speed and it doesn't cost the arm and leg i did spend 600 on this transmission now it's stronger than w58 not as strong as r54 it's the perfect middle ground this came out of a uh mark III super i believe 7m and i bought it with the jc bell housing now if you are going to go with the w55 you have to get another bell housing so keep that in mind if you do get a w58 for 400 300 dollars you still have to get another bell housing um, I believe Drift Motion sells the bell housing for like 500 bucks. So if you get R54 for cheap, you know, get on the bell housing. Keep that in mind. Now, with this trans, it's not going to bolt up to this drive shaft. And I'll show you why right now. Because, as you can see, this is the automatic drive shaft. This is the manual drive shaft. The manual is longer by a tiny bit manual is a tiny bit longer obviously making it not bolting up to your transmission so with that being said you have two options with drive shaft you can source a manual IS300 drive shaft which I did I got it over on Facebook for a hundred bucks and you're good this should work on the W this is gonna work on a W55 and it does work on a W58 ask me how I know so yeah Throw that away and get that. Option number two, one piece custom drive shaft. Uh, I believe Drift, Mo Drift Motion sells one, but I'm not sure the exact price. But if you could find that drive shaft, you, you'd, you'd be good. I, I can't see you just snapping a drive shaft on this. Even if you're pushing, what, a bigger turbo, what, 400, 500, I, I doubt you'll snap a, a drive shaft, honestly. Um, you probably snap an axle before you snap a drive shaft, but um, yeah. 1J, trans, drive shaft, clutch. Um, the clutch you're gonna need is off of a 2J. So when you're buying a clutch, make sure you get a 2JZ GE clutch kit. Um, you're gonna want the flywheel, the clutch, the pressure plate, and some of them do come with throttle bearings. Now, I will be going with a stage three clutch um, out of a 2JZ GE. So when you're buying your clutch, get it out of a 2 Basically type in 2JZGE clutch kit. I'm gonna go with a probably an XTD stage three clutch. 
because uh, I plan on pushing some power with the Winter. For now, it is stock turbo, but you know, there's always upgrades for the future, so I don't want to be pulling that trans out again. Um, with that being said, clutch drive shaft trans 1J, slave and clutch master. Now, with the clutch master, you do have a couple options. I believe some silicas, some silica clutch um, masters work. However, you still gotta get the clutch pedal. Now you can get a manual. You can find somebody selling one out of a manual IS. However, they're selling for premiums of fucking $3,400 for a pedal which is insane, and I refuse to pay. So what I would do is go on excessive manufacturing, or in Jupiter even sells it, and get a clutch pedal for an IS200 for $200. Yeah, it's still a lot for a pedal, but it comes with the pedal brand new. Mind you, this is brand new, and the master cylinder brand new. So now all that's left for this is a clutch line and your, and your, your slave cylinder. I might be wondering, what slave cylinder do I run? I'm not too sure about that. VT Bobby did say in one of his videos that, that you should run the slave cylinder that your transmission is. So since this is W58 out of a Mark III Supra, basically you should run a, um, you should run a W58, a Mark III Supra slave cylinder. However, I, I we have to get a slave cylinder. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys know what slave cylinder to run. I'm still kind of confused about that, so I don't want to be telling you guys wrong information. However, I think I just get the slave cylinder for what transmission you have. Um, other than that, let's see what else is on my list. Slave, clutch master, fuel hanger, yes. The IS300, obviously, 2JZ GE, meaning non-turbo, naturally aspirated. Which means you're going to need a fuel hanger, or you're going to need to run a return line from the 1J to your fuel pump. Now the return line on the 1J, I believe is this one right here. I believe it's right here. This is the fuel return line. This goes back from your motor to your fuel pump. Now the reason that it has this is because this is a, this is a, and this is a, this is a turbo, obviously if you couldn't tell. So with that, that fuel pump needs fuel from the turbo, I believe. So you have to make a return line from this, go back to your fuel pump. Obviously the 2J does not have a turbo, so it is returnless. So you have two options when it comes to that. You can drill a hole into your fuel pump, your fuel pump hanger, and manually run a line to the front and put it into the 1J. But I don't know about y'all, but I don't like the sound of drilling into my fuel hanger. Also, VT Bobby did a good video on that where he showed y'all how to basically put a fitting in and modify your IC on your fuel pump hanger to return to a return style system. But there's a better way. And I believe Bobby did have problems with his fuel hanger leaking. I'm not sure. But um, what you can do is go online and find an Aristo fuel hanger. Now this hanger is a complete hanger. I don't actually have it. I just bought it last night. The hanger is a complete hanger with the fuel pump. It is the exact same connector as the connector for the for the 2J. So it bolts right in. The only thing you need to change is the the floater. That's what um the floater is what changes is what gives you a reading on your gas gauge. If you can see it behind that big ass sticker, but basically that's what I recommend. It is about two hundred dollars. I was lucky enough to get it for like one sixty five, so I got that. Basically, I'm going to drop it right in. I'll probably do another video on that. Let me know if y'all want to see that. Um, let me know what y'all really want to see, man. Um, I got some new channel, you know. So, let me know. Y'all want more 1J content? What y'all want? Could really think about taking apart this entire motor. You know, just to take it apart, see what's up with inside. Let me know if y'all want a video on that, obviously. That'd be pretty interesting. But, um, yeah, moving on from the fuel hanger. Just get an arresto fuel hanger. Save your, save yourself the, the heartache. Just get that hanger. Um, yeah. Bolts right in, same plugs and everything. Now, ECU, you're gonna need different radiator hoses because obviously the radiator is gonna be right here. And the lower, there's a lower. 
right here. So those are totally different from the 2J. So I believe you can run the stock IS300 um, upper radiator hose, but you are gonna need a different bottom one for sure. Um, let me know if y'all know which one's in the comment to run. There's multiple videos out there with people showing you. I just haven't done the research yet, to be honest with you. But um, you're gonna need different radiator hoses. Moving on from that, intercooler. You're gonna need a fat ass front mount. Now, you can be like me and ball out and get a Mishimoto M-Line. After, I, honestly, the only reason I got this was because I seen VT Bobby with an M-Line on his IS and I thought that was the sexiest shit ever. So I had to get the M-Line. Now you can go with like, you know, a baby CX racing in the cooler. You can do that, but why? Why would you do that when you can do this? Um, this intercooler is about a two, what, 250 around there. So yeah, it's not the cheapest intercooler, but you want to keep the 1J cool. You want to keep that turbo cool, man. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't cheap out on the intercooler. I mean, you can, but it's up to y'all, man. Other than that, it's about it. The biggest thing after that is wiring. Now, multiple places sell adapter harnesses or complete engine harnesses to adapt to the ECU. But Chad G Garage, he actually has a really good video showing you literally each wire and what you need to splice in to the ECU. To the, ECU. to the ECU right there. He shows you exactly the body harness. I I apologize. He shows you the exactly what wire on the body harness to splice to the IS three hundred body harness. If you guys didn't know, the one JZ body harness plugs directly in to the two JZ the IS three hundred body harness. So the swap is meant to be. Um, other than that, ECU covered the one J. We covered trans. Drive shaft, intercooler, throttle cable, clutch pedal, master cylinder, slave, fuel hanger, ECM, um, intercooler fuel hangers. That's, that's about it. Clutch line, you are gonna need a clutch line to go from your master cylinder to your slave. Now, depending obviously on what slave cylinder you get, the thread pattern obviously is gonna be different. So you will need to run a different thread clutch line. Um, other than that, that's really about it, man. Um, am I not missing nothing? ABS, you can leave ABS in stock location. It will fit. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be deleting it yet, but yeah, ABS, drop right in with the motor. Um, obviously, make sure you get a front sump uh, 1J. The rear sump, uh, I think it comes in contact with either the power steering rack or the subframe. Yeah, so. Make sure you get a front sump 1J too. Other than that, that about concludes everything, man. 1J swap, IS300. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know if y'all want more videos. She about to be a beast, man. Yo, I also forgot a couple things. Thinking about it now, I forgot about the throttle cable. You are gonna need to run a longer throttle cable as that's not bolts up to the 1J. The 1J throttle body sits way further up. 2J1 sits well right here. So you have two options when it comes to throttle cables. You have one out of the Mark IV Super and two, you have another one out of the 90 to 96 Toyota Camry. Obviously the Mark IV Super is gonna run at a premium. So you will be paying about a hundred bucks for a throttle cable. Now Camry, you can find at a junkyard or on eBay for about $30. So I will go, I'll recommend you go with the throttle cable out the Camry. It fits perfectly on the 1J. VT Bobby also has a video on that. Um, yeah, if you're converting from auto to manual, you're all gonna need to cut your brake pedal. Unless you got a brake pedal and a clutch, then, good, then um, <laughs> congrats. But you're gonna need to cut this in half because the clutch is gonna sit way too close to that. So you could spend another 200 on another shorter brake pedal, but good luck finding one. And then yeah, you're gonna pay another premium. So I'd honestly just cut this in half, call it a day. You're never gonna see it. 
And um, I'll probably do a video on that. Let me know if y'all want to see that. But um, yeah, the clutch pedal should be right there. That's good. Another thing I forgot to mention was the W58 sits up way more. Since it is shorter, it's going to sit about right here. So what that means is you're going to have to cut your trans tunnel. You're going to have to cut to about right here. I would cut just to be safe. VT Bobby also did this in his manual swap video. If y'all want to refer back, look at his manual swap video. He did cut it. Um, and this, you're going to actually need to run a special shifter since you're, since the transmission is sitting right here. It's way below the radio. So he actually ran, runs a cube speed shifter. The cube speed shifter comes up, out, and then up again. So it sits right here. It looks like it's sitting here, but it's way ahead. Um... That Q speed shifter is about 170 bucks. That's what I will be going with because one, it, it it's made for this because the trans obviously sits way up, and then it's a short shifter, so you know I might as well upgrade one time. Um, yeah, that's about it. Other than that, you know you might want to get some gauges, water temp, oil pressure. I already have an oil pressure gauge. Obviously, you're gonna need a boost gauge. So yeah, save up for a boost gauge, water temp, and oil pressure if you want to be if you want to be extra get a get a get an oil pressure gauge but um yeah other than that automatic gauge cluster you really don't have to upgrade that i don't really see why you why you would um yeah that's about it throttle cable cut your cut your trans and cut your brake pedal you got a lot of cutting to do so yeah man that's about it